because everybody will suddenly feel like, uh-oh, we've just been invaded. <laughs> I mean, because if it does not a maneuver around the sun, that would show it's not a natural object, right? Yes, it will be a technological suggestion, but it could be also a mothership that releases mini probes that maneuver. In six days, a 33 billion ton visitor from beyond our solar system will knife past the sun at 55 kilometers per second. The object's name is 3I Atlas, and its trajectory is doing something no random comet should do, hugging the solar system's planetary plane with unnerving precision. Which raises a question astronomers are quietly debating, is this a natural wanderer or something engineered to break hard and take up residence in our cosmic neighborhood? Here's the complication. When 3I Atlas reaches its closest approach on October 29th, Earth's telescopes will be blind. The sun itself blocks every line of sight. The only certainty we'll have is what emerges on the other side and whether it's still traveling at escape velocity or has slowed into a permanent orbit. Uh, we have also orbiters around Mars that could check for unusual activity there. It could be a black swan event where something that looks natural at first ends up being like a Trojan horse, you know. Picture this. You're tossing a dart at a spinning globe, trying to hit a single city street. That's the statistical challenge 3i Atlas has apparently solved by accident. Instead of plunging toward the sun from a steep random angle like most interstellar visitors, it's skimming along the ecliptic, the invisible disk where planets orbit, tilted just five degrees from flat. Well, um, we are still waiting for NASA to release uh, an image, the highest resolution image with 30 kilometers per pixel that was obtained on October 2nd by the high-rise camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. We are seeing the anti-tail um, uh, that was pointed towards the sun, opposite to what we see in the context of uh, comets, and now changing direction and going away from the sun the more conventional way. What happens next challenges every assumption about random cosmic visitors. The last two confirmed interstellar objects, Oumuamua and Borisov, came screaming in from high inclinations, their paths cutting through the solar system at sharp angles. Atlas, by contrast, glides nearly parallel to the disk itself. This alignment fundamentally alters what's possible at perihelion. An object approaching along the ecliptic meets the sun at a shallow angle, maximizing the window for any maneuver that exploits solar gravity as an amplifier. If you were designing a spacecraft to use the Oberth effect, this is exactly the geometry you'd choose. Discovered July 1, 2025, 3i Atlas became only the third confirmed interstellar object in recorded history. Its inbound velocity over 200,000 km per hour confirms it's not bound to our star. Perihelion comes at 1.36 astronomical units, just inside Mars's orbit. Every calculation says it should whip past and vanish forever. Yet the trajectory's uncanny alignment, coupled with that hyperbolic speed, leaves a question hanging in the data. Cosmic accident, or geometric signature of intent. At closest approach, 3i Atlas will be hurtling at nearly 68 kilometers per second, more than double the velocity of the fastest probe humanity has ever launched. This moment, when the object is deepest in the sun's gravitational well and moving fastest, offers a loophole in orbital mechanics that no other location in space can provide. The Oberth effect, first described by German physicist Hermann Oberth in 1929, operates on a principle that sounds almost paradoxical. A rocket burn delivers far more bang when you're already moving at breakneck speed deep inside a gravity well. Fire your engines while crawling through empty space and you get a modest push. Fire those same engines while screaming past the sun at 68 kilometers and the effect multiplies dramatically. The next 60 seconds reveal why mission planners have gone silent. The rule is elegantly simple. The change in orbital energy from a propulsive burn is proportional to your speed at the moment you light the engines. Kinetic energy scales with velocity squared, meaning a one kilometer per second thrust at perihelion translates into an enormous shift in trajectory, like swinging a sledgehammer at full acceleration rather than tapping gently with your wrist. For 3i Atlas, the path to capture would demand a retrograde burn executed precisely at closest solar approach. The objective, shed enough velocity to transform from escape trajectory into a closed permanent orbit around the sun. The mathematics are unforgiving. To drop into a stable solar orbit at 1.36 astronomical units, 
the object would need to bleed off roughly 20 kilometers per second right at perihelion. That's a staggering energy requirement. Even with the most efficient propulsion systems known, the propellant mass would approach the mass of the vehicle itself. Yet the Oberth effect remains the only mechanism that makes such a maneuver remotely feasible. Natural comets experience outgassing, jets of vapor that can nudge trajectory slightly. But these forces are weak and erratic. Think of it like trying to steer a cruise ship with a handheld fan. A controlled, precisely timed retrograde burn at perihelion would stand out in the data like a gunshot in a library. The telltale signature astronomers will hunt for, a sudden drop in outbound velocity, a change far beyond what outgassing could possibly explain. From mid-October through early November 2025, 3i Atlas disappears behind the sun from every terrestrial vantage point. When any target drops below approximately 30 degrees of solar separation, every major ground-based telescope on Earth must look away. Solar avoidance protocols are safety mandates built into hardware and software to protect sensitive optics from catastrophic damage. The blackout window spans October 22nd to November 7th. During those 16 days, as 3i Atlas races through perihelion at maximum speed, no direct imaging or spectroscopic data can be collected. We're blind. Space-based observatories face identical limitations. Hubble never points within 50 degrees of the sun. James Webb enforces an 85-degree buffer. TESS is locked out by solar elongation requirements. Mars orbiters briefly held better geometry. In early October, as 3i Atlas skimmed past the Red Planet, the European Space Agency's ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter swiveled its camera away from the surface and out into the void, capturing five-second exposures stretched to the technical threshold. The target was nearly 50,000 times dimmer than anything the instrument was designed to detect. Raw frames revealed little beyond digital noise. ESA analysts flagged the results as probable noise, unwilling to claim even a marginal detection. By the time processed data enters public archives in late November, weeks will have elapsed since perihelion. Any dramatic shift during that gap could occur entirely unrecorded. Now consider the mass problem. Brightness estimates peg 3i Atlas at roughly 33 billion tons, among the heaviest natural visitors in recent memory. Yet when planetary dynamicists analyzed the October 3rd Mars flyby, they found something unsettling. Silence. At just 29 million kilometers separation, a body carrying that mass should have exerted a measurable gravitational tug on Mars. Instead, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and Trace Gas Orbiter reported nothing. Zero perturbation. Deep Space Network tracking logs showed no deviation above background noise. In 2014, Comet Siding Spring executed a much closer Mars flyby and left a detectable fingerprint in the planet's trajectory despite being smaller and lighter than 3i Atlas is supposed to be. Here, with a mass estimate orders of magnitude higher, the gravitational signature is completely absent. Stop! This imaging failure might be the most important non-detection in history. Astrodynamics teams have cross-checked orbital solutions, hunting for any unexplained drift. The answer returns unchanged. No gravitational tug. No residuals. No evidence whatsoever for a massive solid core. The equation refuses to balance. A bright, fast-spinning object with negligible gravitational pull, the mathematics point toward one uncomfortable possibility, a hollow shell, whether carved by nature or constructed by design. The spin rate, measured from periodic brightness fluctuations, hints at rotation faster than a solid chunk of this size should tolerate without flying apart. Spectroscopists tracking 3i Atlas in mid-September logged a coma stretching 180,000 kilometers across space. The dominant molecule streaming outward is hydrogen cyanide, released at roughly 2 kilograms per second. The chemistry is striking but not unprecedented, active outgassing driven by sunlight warming ancient ices. This September baseline becomes the reference against which any post-perihelion transformation will be measured. If new compounds appear, or outgassing shifts in ways solar heating alone can't explain, those deviations will stand out. A hollow shell diving toward the sun presents two divergent futures. Natural fragility could cause chaotic breakup, scattering debris randomly. Yet there's another scenario, one that Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb insists must remain on the table, intentional deployment. If 3i Atlas is engineered, perihelion offers a singular opportunity. The shell could release smaller units, probes, sensors, 
autonomous modules, each following its own calculated trajectory. Not random fragments tumbling through space, but deliberate payloads catching the gravitational current, like dandelion seeds on a choreographed wind. The evidence would be unmistakable. Post-perihelion observations would reveal discrete, non-random tracks radiating from the original path. Fragments accelerating or steering away from the sun rather than drifting passively. In exactly 23 days, the data will force us to choose between impossible and unprecedented. Loeb's Galileo project checklist is clear. Track every outbound fragment, measure velocities, compare against natural comet breakup models. If the sky reveals order, geometry, intent, the implications cascade beyond astronomy. As of now, the evidence highlights both the limits of our observational infrastructure and the extraordinary nature of this visitor. Its next move is a matter of record waiting to be written, not speculation waiting to be spun. The question isn't whether we believe in natural wanderers or designed machines. It's which story the evidence chooses to tell when 3i Atlas emerges from behind the sun and whether we'll be ready to read what's written in the data.